Hey everybody, B. Reese here. Welcome to the Redstone Tutorials episode number one. Um, in this episode, we're going to be doing automatic lighting. Um, now, I know this probably been done before, but I'm going to show you how I've done it. Little simple things. Um, Minecraft is a very, very, very big game. And there are probably a ton of people on who have never even dabbled into Redstone. Now, I'm hoping this shows you and helps you out to create something um, awesome. Um, we'll give you a little bit more ambiance in your world. Uh, just create that environment, that, you, that, that cool look. Uh, instead of having a bunch of these things <laughs> laying around. Um, I'm in creative, but it can be done in survival. I'm just doing it so I can float around things and I can show you a little bit easier. Uh, now, right off the bat, guys, I apologize if you've been playing Minecraft for a little bit, um, but I have to get into the very, very, very basics. There are a lot of people out there who are intimidated by Redstone and probably have never touched it. Um, and they look at tutorials, they look at videos, and they just kind of get a little bit, <laughs> they get a little stressed out trying to figure it out. Um, so, I apologize again. Let's get into it. Redstone is collected through redstone ore. Redstone ore can be found deep within the environment uh, of Minecraft. You go down there, you dig, you'll get some. It will change your game. The minute you add a redstone uh, thing to your world, it actually changes the game a little bit because you're, you're kind of wanting to know a little bit more. You want to push yourself. Um, you get to the basics, then you want to go to a little bit further. You want to create something automatic like a farm. And I'm going to actually do one of those in a later episode to show you guys because I had a pretty cool design going on uh, with an automatic, um, automatic farm. Uh, so yeah, you'll pick these. Uh, the byproduct of axing those ores are redstone dust. See right here, I've, I've created a nice little design. <laughs> it looks freaking ugly. Uh, redstone dust in itself is useless unless you want to create a bunch of these blocks. Myself, I don't like these blocks. I think these blocks are ugly. <laughs> but to each his own, I'm not going to judge. If you like them, you like them. There you go. They're a nice building block, I guess. Um, but yes, uh, Think of redstone dust, if laid down like, like this, as wiring in your house. Without a source of energy, the wires are useless. Nothing's going to turn on. So what you need to introduce is a source, a source of power. Uh, now this can be either a lever, button, pressure plate, a block, or it can be a torch. I just show you here. There you go. Kind of cool. The current travels from the source in either way um, to each of these lamps. And I'll just make it uh, more day. Haha. <laughs> Hello, sun. I'll be talking about you in a second. <laughs> so that's that's kind of cool. But if you're doing automatic lighting, it's kind of it's kind of useless. I mean, this would be kind of cool if you're doing a big mansion um, and you had double spaced walls. Um, so if you have walls like this and you had a space in between, you could actually create a pretty cool room. You could have lighting in it that you could switch on. Now, the further you get away from your source, the weaker the signal gets until it ultimately does not send a signal anymore. Right? So you can see here, there it goes. doesn't work. How to combat that is through a repeater. The repeater resends your signal on the line until it gets to its final block that you're trying to activate. Now, these repeaters can be set on different times, uh, which is helpful if you're creating a cool-looking automatic lighting system because you can have your lights turn on in sequence. Um, and I'm going to show you that because I've actually got it done already. But we're going to have to go into one more thing, two more things, before we actually get to the main thing of this video. 
Uh, there are also daylight sensors. A daylight sensor is the only sensor in kind of the game. There isn't a night sensor. You can actually transform this into a night sensor, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, so this daylight sensor obviously only works <laughs> when the sun is up. Hello, I told you I'd be talking about you. Um, now that's kind of useless at night. Um, I mean, the lights don't turn on then. They just, oh, ooh, some rain. See, this is why you come into creative, guys. Uh, weather clear. Uh, clear, changing the to clear weather. Perfect. Awesome. Goodbye, rain. Anyway, uh, so this won't work at night. So what you want to do is you want to drop a block and you want to put a torch on it. What this does is the signal coming from the sensor turns off the torch, which in results turns off all of this. Now that might seem a little counterintuitive to what we actually want to do, but the minute this stops working and sending a signal to the block, which has the redstone on it, like so, the following redstone turns on. So obviously when the night when night hits, it turns off the sensor, resulting in a positive charge going to your light or your piston in this case. That is how you turn a daylight sensor into a night sensor. Yay! Uh, now, I've actually done a few tests over here for you guys to see. As you get further away from the block with the redstone torch on it, it will actually turn the lights on sooner and sooner. Um, I believe this one is at, sorry guys, time set, uh, 12,100. Yes, so these are about 12,100. These are about when the sun is starting to set. Um, because the redstone is actually losing a signal that much further because it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker, it turns it on sooner. So this might be really cool um, if you want it. What I've done is I've actually gone and I think I'm at a three, which sets it just as the moon is about there in the sky, which is not bad. I mean, I'm if you have a giant city or town um, and there's not much lighting in it already, because a lot of people will already have buildings, um, with lighting so it kind of helps with the spawn rate of mobs um, but yeah it really depends on how you want it to look so there is your sources you can do one the two all the way up to here uh, you can double around in it for what time works best for you and then you would just continue it on to your sources your lights stuff like that let's turn this back to daytime and explain what this is this is a redstone torch tower it basically brings your signal from ground level all the way up to a block uh, or whatever you need it to um, this makes everything a little bit more sleeker compact um, normally if you're doing redstone and you didn't know this technique you're doing something like this the stair steps stairs there's nothing wrong with stair stepping it um, but it's not as compact, it's not as elegant, um, you have less room to work with, um, so it's not really ideal if you're doing a l automatic lighting for a walkway, unless you want recessed lights like this, um, but you're going to have to dig out a ton of stuff, um, and it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of a pain, it's kind of a pain, guys, so... I've, I've just connected a daylight sensor, right, uh, to the block with the redstone and then continued it on to another block. Uh, all you have to do is put a redstone torch on that block, put a block on the torch, and keep repeating that as far as you want to go until you get to the source you need. Now, if I t took this off, it reverses the signal, turns this one on, that one off, or that one on, that one off on and turns on the light right 
cool. If you're if you're confused about this design, let me know. Just uh, contact me on the Twitters or in the comments below, and I will definitely try to explain it a little bit more in another episode if you want me to. But I think it's pretty basic. Um, it's just repeating your signal all the way up a tower. So I've gone ahead and created a little mini walkway. It doesn't have to look like this. It's a raise just because my creative world is actually like three or four layers deep. Um, in a survival game, it's going to be a little easier to do. Um, just because you have that, that depth to work with. So uh, here's the automatic lighting. It's all set up. Uh, all the way to the end. So if I go up here and I turn on the time to, or not turn on the time, if I set the time to that, we will see the sun go down um, and we'll start to see the lights go on in a sequence. So we'll go block one, block two, block three, four, five, six, and seven. And I could extend that as far as I want um, through repeaters, redstone, and then using the the torch tower just because it's a little bit nicer. It's nicer. Come on, Mr. Moon. Please rise. <laughs> I'm giving you guys a little bit of a tease of my ne next uh, codex build. Um, oh, there we go. Lighting's going on. See that? Nice little sequence. Um, and I'll show you how I've done it. Uh, the nice thing about... Uh, daylight sensors is you can pretty much hide them anywhere because they're not very big. Um, down here, I have hidden the sensor underneath leaves. If you do put a block above it, it starts interfering with the signal. Um, don't do that. Uh, whenever you're doing a daylight sensor, try to use leaves uh, to make bushes. They allow light to pass through because of the transparency of them. And you can't really see what's going on below anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, if I blocked off this, though, it's totally fine. See? So it'll just be one square you're really worried about. Um, but I think it looks it, it looks fine even like this. I mean, unless somebody's, like, jumping up and down, uh, they're not going to see it. They're not going to see it at all, like right here. This would be covered in dirt. So right here, if you if you put bushes here... Unless you're like right above it, you're gonna see it. Even then, I mean, it doesn't matter. So I've created the the night sensor right there. I got a two two line going from the sensor to the 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 block with the redstone. Let's go through my my makeshift town here, guys. Um, go down here. Now this is probably done, been done uh, a couple times. Um, I like very simple. Get on my way, bat. Oh, I, I hate these bats. Anyway, <laughs> I've made it very simple and easy. Uh, you'll see it's very open. Um, now, this could be covered up. Okay. Um, and I've done it simply just my way. It could probably be done a lot easier. If you guys know if it could be done easier, shoot a comment in the down below or uh, reach me on Twitter. I'll listen. I'll, uh, I'll This bat is really making me mad. <laughs> Get out of here. Sorry, guys. Let me deal with this nuisance. Anyway. Anyway. Sorry about that. I hate those bats. Anyway. Here you go. So here's coming from the daylight sensor to the block. I've now split it twice. The, the first line is going to the first light. And the second line is just... This is the line that continues on throughout the build. So it goes on through repeaters carrying the signal. I'm dropping down to other lights that run around the the road up, up above us, right? So I'll go into a little bit more in-depth here on this side just in case you guys want to again. So the daylight sensor runs to the block, which has the redstone torch. So during the day, this will turn this off eliminating any current that is currently running through the redstone. At night, because this is no longer carrying a current, this torch is allowed to go on, and it runs through these uh, redstone dust wires to the repeater, which in then turns the signal on again and repeats it 
to the first light, right? So this is going to this block, turning this torch off, allowing for the torch above to go on, which is powering the light that is just on the block above us. See that? Cool, cool, cool. And that is repeated as many times as I need it uh, through this. So I've run a second line just so I didn't have to make shift the line. Like over. I could probably put a line here, but then it would, it, it gets a little messy. I like things a little bit more cleaner. So this line is my main line, right? And it's repeating through the repeaters. I've set different times uh, as I f get further and further away. Uh, so it gives that look of turning one light on uh, before the other. And each light gets its own spin off, its own line, to again a block with a redstone, block with redstone, to a block with light on it. Okay? And it just it just continues on that in that sequence all the way to the end. I could carry this on as far as I wanted. I could I could add another line over here. So if I wanted to put, let's just say I wanted to put a a light right here. I would all I would have to do is drop a block, a block there, right? Torch it, which is ni uh, nice to do in creative because you can actually play around and figure out how things work. Put a block on top. Put my light. Let's get a lamp right there. Okay. Now there's no signal because that still hasn't been turned off. I could just do this and that. Oh, and I would have to put it here. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Things aren't working the way I wanted them. Right there, right there, and right there. So I do that, that, and there you go. Light is on. So I could, I could, I could play around with it. I could have double lighting. Um, the only reason that I that didn't turn off and I derped in this tutorial video is because the line wasn't actually heading into the block. It was going somewhere else. So, guys, I hope you liked the tutorial. Uh, leave a like. Leave comments. Um, tell me how I'm doing. If you guys liked it, if you want me to continue doing these, I definitely, definitely will. And uh, I'll, I'll learn anything you guys want me to learn. Um, again, let's keep it simple. I do have one more planned. Uh, it's kind of big, so I'm going to take my time uh, creating it. Um, guys, again, I will see you next time in episode number two of the Redstone Tutorials. Take it easy. Bye-bye.